Hello, Cloud Community, and welcome to Houston, Texas, where Rob and I are bringing a special episode of our new Cloud AI Journey with HPE show. Really pumped to be able to break down an interview that I did recently with Hong and Varma here on the team. And look at this gorgeous building we are in here. HP really knows how to show off. Yeah, this, this building is absolutely a showpiece. Uh, they have their new uh, customer experience center here. They have a lot going on and a lot of innovation going on here as well, which can't, you can't beat being in the center of that innovation. You really can't. And you know, speaking of, we had such an innovative interview with Hong and Varma earlier. And I want to go back through some of that footage and get your hot take. This first clip is all about something I know that you and I are really passionate about, which is getting workflows, data, everything out of silos. Let's go ahead and run that back. Um, then it was really about bringing the cloud experience on-prem, and that was a big win for our customers with HPE GreenLake. Um, and then we asked ourselves, okay, so now what? And, and what we saw as hybrid cloud became more pervasive was that um, it created a lot of problems when customers went to the public cloud in a, in a sort of what we call a, a hybrid by accident way where they basically let the lines of business uh, deploy public clouds on their own. And so now you have created a lot of different operational silos. You had operational, operational silos for your traditional infrastructure, for your private cloud, as well as for all the public cloud. Uh, deployments you have. And so that's the that's the next big problem we're going after, which is how do we simplify hybrid multi-cloud operations um, in a in a in a cloud native way, in a unified way that um, you know is is truly brings the next generation of AI and automation to bear. Uh, and so that's really the big focus for us um, in this next phase of our hybrid cloud, our our Green Lake journey. So what do you think, Rob? So I, I think what's really great about Hong and what he talks to here is that a lot of people ended up in cloud by accident and not on purpose, in, not intentionally. And a lot of it was, hey, we have to go cloud first, and that meant to a hyperscaler. I, I think where Hong brings it back together is that really talking about how deployments of cloud are actually coming on-prem as well, and we're seeing that in our data with ETR. We absolutely are. You know, over 50% are still on-prem, which again, with new applications. So I think this is really a, uh, a key to where they're going with their strategy and why what we're gonna talk about with the traditional, uh, I guess you could say, traditional stack really isn't equivalent to what is coming now in the future with the full stack. I think you're absolutely right. I think it's one of the highlights of that conversation and I'm glad that you called it out. We've got even more footage for you all. Our next clip here is talking about multi-vendor support and observability, really critical with OpsRamp since they've been a part of HP now for about 18 months. Let's go ahead and roll that back. In fact, after the acquisition, our multi-vendor support where we not only support HPE, but non-HPE gear into the environment is the number one. Number two, we doubled down our full stack observability with cloud native standards and open telemetry and open standards using EPPF and you know a bunch of modern cloud cloud native um, you know, uh, technologies that allows us to instrument these uh, infrastructures and applications, full stack observability. And number three is the AI, you know, and AI related investments that we did and we announced in last year's Discover, the OpsRAM co-pilot, and we continued the journey to really accelerate the product acceleration. Last but not the least, network observability, which is, you know, we partnered with Aruba, which is a large uh, networking uh, uh, division of HPE. Uh, we support multi-vendor multi network observability that we integrated into Aruba's thing to accelerate um, a full stack network observability, which is not look at network performance management, but network performance, topology, and configuration all together to give a unique network observability. Okay, Rob, what do you think about this clip? So I think Varma brought it home really well, talking about how you can't just be singular in nature in a hybrid cloud. And I think everybody looks at hybrid. Hybrid is the dominant uh, 
cloud deployment model now. And I, I think, again, we'll get into this a little bit more, but hybrid doesn't mean uh, you know, here or there. I mean, it talks about edge, it talks about you know, colo, yeah, it talks about a number point. of different places mm -hmm. that they're bringing together. And I think really when you start to look at how HPE has brought a full stack observability together, I think when you start to look at what OpsRamp brings to the party, not just as part of GreenLake, but as part of the entire uh, connective tissue for their stack, that is their cloud stack. I think also the fact that they brought it together with, uh, you know, again, Aruba and Aruba Central uh, really is the strength of playing off of the different pieces and innovating as they brought the companies together. Yeah, I think that's actually one of the things I found really impressive about the interview, and I was delighted that HPE wanted to highlight this, was the fact that HPE isn't trying to, to uh, acquire OpsRamp and then not leverage their awesomeness, despite it being a, a small team relative to the scope of HPE. They're really celebrating that, bringing that into their solution. Observability, so important right now. OpsRamp as is is a leader in a hybrid observability. It's it's one of the fun things you're going to see in this next clip, Rob. From the infrastructure building blocks to then taking those infrastructure building blocks into t-shirt sized cloud services, then having the runtime layer now with virtualization and containers. Now we have a full suite of hybrid cloud management capabilities with OpsRamp being, you know, a key cornerstone of that. So we clearly have a full stack and, and OpsRamp fits very well. We have a sum of parts strategy, but what I'm a firm believer, and I've, I'm a long-term practitioner of technology strategy is that um, just because you have a, you have a sum of parts strategy doesn't mean that, you know, you have, to, you, have you can neglect the individual pieces within that uh, portfolio. Each piece in that portfolio has to stand on its own merits, has to be able to compete in the marketplace um, and, and win, win business uh, on its own merits. So it's very important for us um, to make OpsRamp successful, um, leveraging the, the capabilities we have, but you know, we, want, we want OpsRamp to be, uh, to be a market leader in hybrid observability, period, right? Not tied to anything. And, um, and, 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 you know, Mara and I talk about this all the time. You know, OpsRamp is really a star in our portfolio. It's a billion dollar business. I truly believe that this, this is a billion dollar business in the making. So. Love it. That's, you heard it here that's, for, that's, that's you our heard commitment. it here first. That's our commitment, right? We're not here <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Parma, what do you want to add to that? I, I think you put a bullseye on my back for <laughs> multi-billion dollar revenue here. So, no, I think I'm excited about the opportunity. The, uh, the, uh, the de facto leadership in hybrid observability can only come when you have a fundamental stack that supports from ground up that. And I think OpsRamp has the underpinnings for doing that and the go-to-market um, you know, capability that HPE provides with, uh, you know, almost 11,000 plus salespeople in the field, um, you know, it is an achievable target. All right. I, I, again, I think when you start to look at how they're breaking this down and looking at the opportunity, uh, being a billion dollar opportunity here, I, yeah. I think that is that, hey, you got to put, uh, you know, big audacious goals out there to aim for. I think that, again, the thinking behind it makes a lot of sense. There is a huge TAM uh, in observability. And I think, you know, HP is pretty well, you know, positioned to bring that together. As, you know, Varma had talked about in the other clip uh, as well around open telemetry and where they're going with some of those open standards and eBPF and some of the other things that are going on. But in this one, really looking at how cloud is an operating model, not a place, and really how that is leading them to this billion dollar opportunity for OpsRamp uh, and for GreenLake in general, I think this really is key to how they're going to really you know, make a lot of hay in this. I think that observability is that full stack uh, I think that there's a platform play here. Uh, we, we talk about it all the time uh, on m many of our different analyses that observability is about a platform play. I think that they're coming from it 
from a, the infrastructure up perspective. Uh, I think they're also making acquisitions, further acquisitions on top of OpsRamp uh, with their uh, acquisition of Morpheus, which we'll talk about uh, probably at a later date. Mm -hmm. But when you start to look at how they're bringing this together and creating that stack, plus under the hood with the hardware, the software, things like KVM and their own container stack, really they're taking an innovative approach to bringing that to bear. But I think, you know, keying off the fact that they also bring in third parties, like mm -hmm. they can, you know, not just doing Aruba's technology, but doing Cisco's technology. I think that's key to getting that a billion dollar type of run rate. Yeah, well, you've got to optimize the experience for the de developers engaging with this and, and have the best end-to-end -end solution. That's definitely something that I took away from this interview a lot was how they're thinking about that full stack solution for hybrid cloud, the really pivotal role that OpsRamp plays within that. And, and it's, you know, observability is hot. You and I have been talking about it a lot lately. It seems to be one of those areas that's really having a moment. I, I think so. I think observability has really uh, been at the center of people because you, you talk about it, in, especially with AI and traditional cloud native applications coming on premise as part mm -hmm. of AI based applications where AI and agents is going to be part of these cloud native applications. They're not going to be the, you know, people aren't going to yeah. go and compete against ChatGPT. But if you don't understand how all the parts pieces are working, how do you know your customer experience with that application is happening? This is where observability and full stack observability from the disk on out through the CPU, the memory, all the way out the network, and looking at how that's all brought together is extremely powerful for what Ops Ramp brings to the party. Uh, they also have a sustainability angle to it with mm -hmm. the sustainability uh, of capability in their dashboard within the GreenLake dashboard. I think there's a lot going on here that really help organizations plan better, observe better, and manage better that infrastructure as a cloud. So it simplifies what they're doing, which is what people want in a cloud operating model. Yeah, well said, Rob. Well said. Yes, that was great. I've got one more clip for you to review with me today. And this is looking across industry verticals. Let's go ahead and play that back. You know, every industry, this is a pretty horizontal in, in nature when it comes to IT, right, and IT operations management. It may not be industry specific from a need perspective, maybe use cases in some, you know, retail industry potentially call for, you know, how does a, a consumer experience of a retail application is going to see um, and in, in the case of, uh, you know, branch offices, you may uh, find hybrid observability needs to kind of address the last mile and making sure that the branch office or a retail location uh, is getting what they need to do. You know, we have a lot of, um, you know, applications that we accelerated in the last 18 months, ranging from financial institutions to large retail uh, deployments, you know, without naming the companies, you know, we have deployments into 2000 stores, you know, where hybrid infrastructure stack is the footprint in these 2000 stores, uh, where hybrid observability from infrastructure that is sitting in the in the in the store in a in a back office to all the way to the cloud workloads that are supporting those infrastructure elements are all part of the use cases that we have addressed in the last 18 months post acquisition. That's a really good example because there's a lot of things going on within a store in terms of actions and needs and privacy and a whole bunch of other things. So it's an excellent example. Hong, similar question to you. Are, are you noticing any trends in the industry? Anything that everyone needs right now? Is is any any vertical jumping out in front or is everyone starting to really realize that now is the moment to make this transformation and really think about your hybrid strategy? I think it's uh, it's pervasive. Uh, mm -hmm. This this oh, cool. and, and um, it is it is quite pervasive. I mean, um, I, I'm not going to cite specific surveys, but you know, I've I've come across. Uh, you know, obviously, we talk talk to a lot of customers, and we've seen a lot of the data. You know, you could say anywhere from seventy to eighty percent of customers out there, enterprises out there, are either looking to repatriate or rebalance their um, their workloads uh, across public and, and on prem. So I think. I, I would go, uh, I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say that hybrid is now the dominant IT architecture. 
Uh, so, so, so I think that's, that's today. And I think the other thing is, uh, you know, honestly, there's a lot of uh, what I call quiet repatriation, a quiet rebalancing, you know, people just do it because it makes sense. They're not making big public pronouncements like, you know, a few, few years back when people were making big public pronouncements about going to the public cloud. Now people are just quietly repatriating, they, they, you know, because that's the right thing to do. There's no announcements you need to make. Okay, Rob, final hot take. I, I think that they they nailed it. I think, you know, Hong and Varma really uh, hit the nail on the head with the fact that observability and cloud are not specific to industries. I think the use cases within those industries, I mean, we're here in Houston, you know, oil and gas, big here. When you start to look at how they're using it, think about, and having I've worked in the oil and gas industry, and you start to look out into, uh, I had, happened to be on an oil refinery in Trinidad. And we had wells out on the other side of the island in the rainforest. Those, those wells uh, you know, generated a terabyte of data per day. That's out at the edge, and you're Whoa. starting to look at how do you bring and it's move that. a ton that. of data. Yeah, a ton of data. That, and that was a small little refinery and you know, operation yeah, that we had going on there. You start to look at these different industries, be it you know, they talk about retail in the 2,000 stores. You start to look at all of these different pieces that are coming together. And the, the data is at the edge. And I think you know, we We talk, know this. 50% of data is at the edge. It, at least. Yeah. And 86% of data that people want to use within their AI is on-prem. So when you look at this observability and you look at how you can control the data, you look at governance, you look at guardrails, you look at how it's not just about those applications. AI is actually a small piece of an estate of applications. You really need to optimize for the full customer journey so that it's not just about making their AI fast, it's about making the entire application experience fast, which is where from, you know, again, disk forward out to mm -hmm. that customer experience becomes really important where OpsRamp has really helped within those industries because it can gather data from all of these different types of uh, assets and kit that the customer has and bring it together. And I, I think, you know, again, it, it's just a really key that there's not really a, an industry vertical that can't benefit from that type of observability. No, I think that's that's a great point. And what a fun example there with the Trinidad oil well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's you start to Very on brand for being here in Texas. Yeah, Houston. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Drill, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this has been awesome, Rob. I really appreciate you breaking down this interview with me. I'm so excited for this entire cloud AI journey series that we're doing with HPE. This is, we're just gonna keep the fun coming. Absolutely, and I, th I think again, that cloud operating model, it's not just in the hyperscalers. It is mm -hmm. on-premise, it's in the colos, it's at the edge, it is it everywhere, is. and that's where observability really is key. Yeah, I can't wait to see how this scales out and some fun customer stories hopefully in the future. And really can't wait to continue this series with you, Rob. Thanks for hanging out today. Thank you. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful rock. We're here in fabulous Houston, Texas at HPE HQ in this stunning building. Thank you to everyone here who's made us feel so welcome. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.